Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this gathering, oh God. Thank you for your people who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the gift of prayer, Lord God, because with prayer, we can cause heaven to move on our behalf. Yes, Father. With prayer, oh God, we can change what is happening on the earth. We can break generational curses. We can pray our loved ones into the kingdom, oh God. We can pray for the harvest. We can pray for laborers, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together to learn more about what it means to intercede, oh God. We want your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want to know, oh God, what it is you require of us even more, Father, because there's always more. There are, there's higher heights and deeper depths. And so, Father, we are looking to you with ears open in the spirit realm to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying, to receive what the spirit of the Lord is saying, Oh God, to be refreshed, to be renewed, to be uh, empowered, oh God, to do all that you've called us to do. And so we thank you for our guest speaker, Lord God. Thank you for what you've poured into her, li her life. Thank you for making her a willing vessel yes. to serve in, in these uh, nights of intercessory training. And so, Lord, we pray a special anointing upon her. Yes, Lord. That she will be free yes. by the Spirit of the Living God to release what you, what you will have her release from the throne of heaven. Yes, Father. And we bless every hero, bless every family, O oh God. May the Word of God go forth and not come back, Lord. May we all be changed and transformed. And to do the work of the kingdom. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask um everyone that while we're doing the teaching, that um I'm gonna ask you to mute your mic because we're picking up some background noise coming through. And um I'm gonna now introduce our special um um, guests, uh, speaker, presenter. Um, we are privileged to have with us uh, Elder Sally Sarah uh, Mis Mishkin. Uh, she's an intercessor, a uh, Bible teacher who operates in the gifts of teaching, prophecy, and encouragement with an emphasis on the Jewish roots of the faith. Um, she is an elder with the Fivefold Global Training Network. Um, and, you know, we, we all should know the Fivefold Global Training Network because um, Apostle Terry Ball and the Shell Ball um, has um, um, been in relationship with us for a number of years. Uh, she is a teacher uh, with the uh, Fivefold um, Apostolic College. Uh, uh, Sally serves as administrative assistant with the Battle Axe Brigade, a strategic prayer ministry, and is a certified counselor with the International Institute of Faith-Based Counseling. Currently, she is serving uh, as the Broward County Ambassador uh, for, City, for, for Cry, Florida, a statewide intercessory prayer network, and is a radio personality on the WISE uh, Talk Radio and Outreach of New Alpha uh, Worship Center in Miami Gardens, Florida. Uh, she has a weekly program uh, which is called uh, Sitting at the Gates of Wisdom. Very powerful uh, program that comes on on Saturday morning. So I really encourage everyone to uh, begin to tune in on, on uh, Facebook and um, to, to listen to a program. But we are privileged uh, that Elder Sally has agreed uh, to, um, to teach us. And uh, we, we intend for the next few weeks uh, to have several um, sessions of training in prophetic intercessory prayer. So uh, we welcome you, uh, Elder Sally, and um, you, are, you are released to, to say and to teach whatever the Lord has instructed you to teach us. God bless you.
Uh, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Victor. Pa I mean, Pastor Eddie, Pastor Victor's. <laughs> the, Pastor the Eddie, Pastor duo. Margo. <laughs> there you go, the dynamic duo. So I thank you so much. And I just greet all of you in the name of the Lord. And um, I felt like I should share first all the scripture that the Lord has me warring with for the Bahamas. And it's uh, Job 22, 23 through 30. Job 22, 23 through 30. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. You Amen. shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles. Then will you lay up gold as dust. You've had a lot of dust down there. Yes. Gold as dust, the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shall have plenty of silver you shall make your prayer unto him and he will hear you you shall pay your vows you shall decree a thing and it shall be established Establish. unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways when men are cast down then you shall say just as you have been saying to the neighbor there is lifting up, and he shall save the humble person. He shall deliver the island of the innocent, and it wow. is delivered by the pureness of your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the scripture I've been warring with. You know, the word is our weapon. So whenever I'm uh, given an assignment to pray for a person, that's how I started out, actually. God had me get a prayer notebook and he gave me names and I knew the word was the weapon. So I asked for a scripture and I would just take and I would pray that scripture for that person. So this is the scripture he gave me. So that um, word innocent in the Hebrew, it comes from a primitive root and it's pronounced Naka. <laughs> wow. So you are the island of the Naka. Naka. Okay, amen. Naka. amen. And it means clean. It means pure. It means free. Hallelujah. Wow. Praise the Lord. So that's a lot to meditate on right there. And then I thought it was interesting uh, saying delivered by the pureness of our hands. And we're all walking around washing our hands for 20 seconds. Yeah, yeah. God tried to give us a message. <laughs> I said to my friend the other day, you think with all of us wearing masks, we'll learn to keep our mouth shut? <laughs> there are so many lessons to learn from this season. Yes. Praise God. All right. So I'm going to be teaching on intercessory prayer. There's a lot of different types of prayer. Intercessory prayer is a type of prayer, but um, it's, it's different. Intercession takes you to another level. And so I just want to give you the definition of intercession. And the word intercession comes, I do a lot of studying, word studying, because God dealt with me about my mouth. And so um, I look things up. I even look up words in the dictionary before I write a prayer, because I want to know what I'm saying, because what you put out with your mouth is going to come back to you. When you open your mouth, you're speaking life or you're speaking death. So I want to make sure I'm, I'm speaking life. So this word intercession uh, comes from Strong's and it's a root and it means to strike or, or violence, to cause, to entreat to fall upon, to pray, to reach, or to run. That's the Hebrew word, paga. And then in the Chaldee, in Gesenius Chaldee, it means strike upon or against. It is connected to a Latin word, the Latin word pox. The uh, Chaldee word is pepajit, and the Latin is pox. And that has the idea of striking or pushing to strike a covenant with someone to make peace. Because if we're going to be interceding, if we're going to be praying with accuracy, we need to understand that we all have a covenant with God. And it's because of that covenant that we even have the right to approach his throne. 
Uh, in Greek, the words for intercede is entuxis, and it means a conversation, a petition, a technical term for approaching a king. And so we approach God in intercession, and it means seeking the presence and hearing of God on behalf of others. So this takes place on three levels. There's intercession between man and God. There's intercession between man and man. And then there's intercession between man and the forces of darkness. So first of all, I want to give you an example of intercession between man and man. In Jeremiah 36, uh, here, this is where the king, he was given the scroll. And it says, and, and every time they read a portion, he'd cut it off and he'd throw it in the fire. Breaks my heart every time I read it. Nevertheless, El Nathan and Deliah and Gamariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. So sometimes if we're going, if there's a, a brother or sister in the Lord that's straight away, we're, when we go to them, when we appeal to them, we're actually making intercession. Then there's intercession of Abigail between David and Nabal, and that's from 1 Samuel 25, starting at 23. Now we know David had been guarding Nabal's sheep, and so it came time, and he went to Nabal, and he wanted to get some payment for what he had done. And Nabal wouldn't have anything to do with him. He didn't want to give him his hire. And so he was going to kill him. He was going to destroy. And Abigail finds out about this, and she is going to make intercession. So she gets donkeys, and she gets food, and she approaches him. And it says, when she saw him, she hasted, lighted off the ass, fell before David on her face, and bowed herself to the ground. She fell at his feet. She humbled herself. It, it, to make intercession, you must be humble. She fell at his feet and said, upon me, my Lord, let this iniquity be. Let thy handmaid, I pray thee, speak and hear the words of your handmaid. Let not my Lord regard this man of Belial, Nabal, for as his name is, so he is full of folly with him. But I, your handmaid, saw not the young men of thy Lord whom you did send. Now, therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives, as thy soul lives, seeing the Lord has withholden you from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, now let your enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. So basically, she's speaking a curse over Nabal, and she says, now this blessing with which thy handmaid has brought to my Lord, let it be given to the young men that follow. And I pray, forgive the trespass of your handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make your Lord a sure house. And so here she's taken the sin on herself. And that's sometimes we as intercessors, we will carry a burden. A weight, you'll feel it sometime, not always, but sometimes you will feel a weight come on you. When that weight comes on you and you have an intercessory burden from the Lord, you can't pray it away. You can't bind it. You can't rebuke it. Ask me how I know. <laughs> you carry it until you have broken through. All right. And so here she humbled herself and in in before him and she took it on herself and she spoke a blessing over him and she entreated him to forgive. So sometimes we need to do that. Sometimes we see people, unforgiveness is one of the most detrimental things to a believer's life, to their health, uh, and it can hinder their prayers from being answered. So when we go to somebody and we entreat them to intercede, we are making intercession man to man. Okay. All right. Then there is intercession between man and and God. And this is um, 
where Moses comes before the Lord, starting at verse seven. The Lord said to Moses, go get thee down for the people that you brought out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They made a molten calf and worshiped it and have sacrificed to it and said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. And the Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people and it is a stiff necked people. Now therefore, let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them and I will make of thee a great nation. Now that was quite an offer. <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't even imagine being with God when he is angry. <laughs> so he made him an offer. He said, I'm going to wipe him out and I'm going to start over with you. And so what does Moses say? Verse 11, Moses besought the Lord his God and he said, Lord, why does thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Because previously God said the people you brought out. So here Moses is reminding him, God, these are your people. <laughs> <laughs> you know how we do yeah it's not my son it's your son okay so he's reminding him and then he says wherefore should the egyptians speak and say for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth so here he's saying well, what are the egyptians gonna think you know he's 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 prevailing upon god's reputation <laughs> he's reminding him who he is um Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants to whom you swore your own self and said to them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven and all this land that I've spoken of will I give to your seed and they'll inherit it forever. And so he's reminding God of the covenant. God had a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's reminding them, you said you were gonna, they were going to have a big seed and you were going to bring them into the land. So he's reminding God of his covenant and his promises. And this is one of the things that we do when we're making intercession. Whatever the topic might be about, I seek the scripture, I look up the promises on that topic, and then I'll stand on those and I will pray them to the Lord says the lord repented of the evil which he brought to do to his people now that took a lot of chutzpah <laughs> i can't even imagine <laughs> getting up in god's face when he was angry saying hey these are your people remember what you said but wow. that's what an intercessor does and god likes it he says come let us reason together you know lot did um um Abraham did the same thing when he was interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, of course, he didn't get up in God's face like Moses did. Yeah. He was a little more humble. He said, well, what about if there's 10 or nine or whatever? But there is such a power in intercession. Okay, so here's another example of intercession. Jesus on the cross. Yeah. Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great he will divide the spoil with the strong. Now, it sure didn't look like it when he was on that cross because he has poured out his soul unto death. He was numbered with the transgressors. He bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So he died. I mean, that was like the ultimate act of intercession. He laid down his life. And, you know, some Christians will. Some Christians, you know, like look at the Christians in Egypt that have been slain. We're not all called to do that. Um, we're called to live a crucified life. And, and that's how we lay down our lives. But that's, you know, that's what intercession is about. You're standing between people. And we will get into intercession um, against the powers of darkness when we get into spiritual warfare next week, okay? All right, now, who can make intercession? Not just everybody can do that, you know. All right, so first of all, we have Jesus, uh, Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. 
So he died, he rose again, he's in heaven, and he's still making intercession. And this uh, is why I believe every believer has a portion in intercession because we are his body. If the head is making intercession, then the body needs to follow suit, or you got a problem if the body's not following after the head. Praise God. Hebrews 7.25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. That's been his whole purpose of existence from the very beginning. It was mentioned back in the book of Genesis chapter three to make intercession for us, to stand in the gap. All right. Who else can make intercession? Romans 26 and 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts, what is the mind of the Spirit? Because he makes intercession for the saints according to to the will of God. So when we become born again, we have entered in basically to the Abrahamic covenant because we're the seed of Abraham, it tells us in the book of Galatians. And just as Abraham and that covenant was sealed with circumcision, our seal is the Holy Spirit. And that spirit dwells in us. Jesus said that's why he had to go away because he was going to send another comforter. And so um, the spirit will um, intercede through us. And sometimes it, it might be in English or whatever language you speak, he'll inspire you, begin to speak. Sometimes we speak in tongues and that's the spirit interceding through us. And sometimes you might even groan uh, in travail. I've had that happen not very often. I know some people that's uh, a major part of the way God has them intercede. It's, it's like they're birthing something in the spirit and they have, you know, uh, birth pains and, and groaning. Sometimes I, I've, I've had uh, one time in particular, I remember we were having a Mother's Day uh, event at a church and uh, there was this young girl that was coming and she was so hardened because she was in such a very, very, very difficult situation. And I remember that week particularly, I was just having, um, it was almost like stomach cramps. And I would get up, I'd do what I have to do, and I would just have to go to bed and lay down. And I would just lay there and pray and pray. And I was, I was asking God, you know, what's going on? Is something wrong? And he says, no, you're interceding. So this went on all week long. When I got to the service that Sunday, I had so much pain. Now, this is an extreme example. I don't want to scare anybody. <laughs> but I, had, I was just doubled over because I was, had such pain. You know, I talked about uh, Hannah. It said her bowels turned within her. You can get to a depth of intercession where it, you're going to feel it in your body. Uh, one day, the Lord had me look up the word burden. And I, so I looked up the word burden. I took out my strongs and I just went through and it would say my heart turned within me, my liver turned within me, my kidneys turned within me, my bowels turned within me. So you can get to such a depth of intercession that you're going to feel it in those body parts. When the intercession has been released, it's over. <laughs> So I've learned if I start getting an ache, of, ache or pain, I don't right away think I need to be healed. I go to the Lord and I ask him. And uh, yeah, we give the doctor all this money because I got to just go in my prayer closet and pray. But anyway, I got to the church and I'm, I was, and I mean, the worship was powerful. All the glory was pouring out. And I'm in the back because I don't want to be disrupting anything. I'm way in the back of the church, doubled over, praying, 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 praying. And so finally, they call people up to the altar. And so when, she, when the pastor did that, it broke. And I went up and I started praying. And this girl that I had been praying for that was so hard. I mean, it was like you couldn't even reach her. There was such a wall. She came running over to me 
she grabbed me. She held on to me and she was sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. And so she got a major breakthrough that day. But part of it was because I had spent that time in intercession. All right. Um, so a prophetic intercession, prophets make intercession. In Jeremiah 27, 18, it says, if they be prophets and if the Lord, the word of the Lord is with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord and the house of the King of Judah and at Jerusalem go not to Babylon. So prophets can make intercession. Um, and then of course, saints can intercede on behalf of others. And this is one of my main, main um, scriptures that God has just grafted into my heart. First Timothy chapter two, I exhort therefore, first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men and kings and those in authority that you can lead a, a peaceful, peaceable, uh, you can lead peaceably and righteous. And I really believe when God first quickened me to this scripture, and I thought, oh my God. And I, and I thought about who are all the people that have authority over me and over my family? You know, there was our pastor, there was um, the teachers, there were my husband's bosses, there was our land. The Lord just had me write it down. Make a list of everybody that has authority over your life or authority over the life of one of your family members. I do that to this day. I pray for my, my, my son-in-laws, my daughter, my sons, my grandsons. If you are linked to my family, you are on my prayer list. I'll tell you what. <laughs> and so I do that every day. I don't spend a lot of time, but I'll lift up their places of work. I lift up their schools. I lift up the cities they live in. I lift up the state they live in. And um, I, I do it by name. And sometimes I might pray in tongues a little bit. And then at the end, after I lift up each one by name, then I'll start taking authority and binding the demons and releasing whatever the Lord shows me to release. So um, I don't know how many years ago the Lord had me start tithing my time. Now, I believe in tithing money, but um, God dealt with me about tithing my time, time. spending two hours and 40 minutes um, a day with the Lord. And so um, from that point, I started getting up at 5.30 in the morning. Sometimes now, once I got connected to the network, sometimes I got to get up at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> but... Um, and God has really blessed me with that. You know, I'm, I spend time in the word. I love the quiet, the stillness of the morning um, and, and getting in the word. And, you know, I'll just go through and I'll read uh, my scriptures. I'll do, I, I do like three scriptures in the old, three chapters in the Old Testament, two chapters in the new, unless the Lord has me following something else. And it's just amazing the revelation that I get from the Lord. And then, you know, I'll, I'll uh, finish that with my prayer time. And I believe God has really honored me for that. And I believe, you know, when you tithe, God gives back to you. And I believe that's one way God keeps me in his timing for my life, because I tithe and it says the promise of tithing in Malachi 3, 10 and 11 is he'll rebuke the devourer from your path and he keeps your fruit from falling off the vine beforehand. So he's keeping you in his timing. And so um, I, I recommend that as well, because timing is an important part of intercession. All right, now, one of the main requirements for being an effective intercession is repentance. Psalm 66, 18 says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. If we want our prayers to be answered, our hearts have to be pure. In James 5, 16, it said, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. And so 
if you have, uh, and that word faults is not necessarily sins. It could be faults or weaknesses. And so sometimes I've learned to do that. If I have an area in my life where I'm just struggling with, I'll call somebody, get a trusted person. You know, I always ask God who I should call because <laughs> you can't go to everybody. And, um, and I'll just confess my fault to them and, um, and ask them to pray for me. And then I get a healing. And then it says here, um, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So when you have free from sin, then you are righteous because we have the righteousness of Christ when we repent. Uh, and that word effective is energes, and it comes, the Greek word energes, and it means to be powerful. We need to be powerful in prayer. Uh, and the word fervent means to be active, efficient, or mighty. We need to be mighty in prayer. So if we're going to be mighty, you know, it says in the book of Daniel, in the last days, those who know their God will be mighty and do exploits. So if we're going to be mighty, we have to walk in righteousness. If we're going to intercede, it's part of our spiritual DNA to possess the gates of our enemy. That's what was prophesied over the seed of Abraham, that they would possess the gates of their enemy, which means possess your cities, take your cities for God. And so if we're going to be able to do that, we must be close to God. We must walk in righteousness. Now, another area also um, are ancestral sins. Ancestral sins can hinder the gospel from going forth. It can hinder people from hearing. Uh, this was another very, very significant verse. I was going through an issue in my life. Um, I was being constantly being uh, confronted with gossip. And I didn't even like gossip before I became a Christian, you know? And I'm like, Lord, why is this going on? I mean, it was to the point where it was really annoying me. And so the Lord gave me two scriptures. One was from Psalm 96, where it says, the gods of the heathen are idols. And this one, Leviticus 26, uh, 39 through 42. And the main thing here is... Um, the, he's, he's telling the Jews, this is what's going to happen. He's telling them, you're going to fall away. I'm going to scatter you throughout the nations, and many of you are going to die. But those that are left of you are going to pine away in their iniquity in their enemy's land, and also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. And so even the Jews, um, when they were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, it says in there, the children were innocent, but they wandered for 40 years because of the sins of the parents. And that, you think about that, that's a, a powerful, powerful statement. But verse 40, if they confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, that they trespassed against me, and also they walk contrary to me, and I walk contrary to them. I brought them into land of their enemies. If their uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they accept the punishment, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, with Isaac, with Abraham, will I remember, and I will remember the land. It's all about covenant. It's all about covenant. And so um, now you might ask, how do you know what your ancestors' sins are? <laughs> well, in some cases, you just have to look around and you'll see. And so start there. You start with your sins, then your ancestors. With me, the Lord even had me research the history because he gave me these two scriptures together about the gods. And I used, um, I used to be uh, very in, enchanted with mythology. And so I thought, oh my God, all those gods I read about, they were demons. So I had to repent of that. But I also had to acknowledge that a lot of these gods, my ancestors probably worshiped them. So this took me on a, a long process of just, you know, sitting before the Lord and repenting of sins. Also, you can have visions, you can have dreams. Somebody might give you a word of prophecy. So if you just ask the Lord, he will show you. And then there's also the sins of your nation. 
Um, and so sometimes like if there's sites where there's been murders committed, um, if there's been um, massacre, devastation, you've had your whole, you know, your whole nation there was devastated with that, that hurricane. And so there might be key places that God would have you to go to and stand on the land and pray and repent of what was done there. This is part of the priestly ministry, okay? And that's what intercessors are, were priests. That's what God always wanted was a nation of priests. And um, I'm gonna go into more of that later um, when we're getting with the spiritual warfare. And also there's certain, um, there's a really good book. It's called Taking Your Cities for God by John Dawson. Uh, and he, I believe that in that book, he has a lot of questions and um, hopefully next week I'll learn how to share that I can put the questions up or maybe I can just email them to you, Pastor Eddie, and you could get yeah. them out. Okay. Uh, because you need, if you were, if you're really serious about this, which I believe you are, <laughs> oh, yes, you're going to have to do some deep research. You're going to okay. have to do some research. You've been praying a long time and, um, and God, wa I mean, we see he wants the island. He wants gold for all that dust. Praise the Lord. I'm excited every time I think about it. All right. Amen. Amen. All right. So here's some other uses for um, the words effectual and fervent. To be operative. We need to be in motion. We need to put forth power. Where it says, you know, the kingdom is taken by violence. Part of that violence is the power, the force that we release in prayer. For work, to work for one, to help one, to display one's activity. Now, um, eight years ago, my husband passed away. Uh, shortly after that, uh, the company that I was working for, Family Christian Stores, they closed the store that I was managing. I lost my house on foreclosure, and one of my loved ones was sentenced to jail for a crime they did not commit. And I, I knew it was God's time for me to move out of Miami. And this one scripture, um, so I, I wasn't upset about having to move because I knew it was God. But this one scripture kept coming to me over and over. It's from Ephesians 3.20. Now, unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. So, if this is above anything that I could ask, I didn't even know what to pray for. Mm. If this is above anything that I could think, I didn't even know what to think about. But this was the portion I could work on, the power that worked in me. Okay, so what does that mean? You know, the devil wants to pluck up our wells. We're supposed to have rivers of life coming out of us. That's the power. So he wants to plug it up with fear, with bitterness, with you know, the world, whatever it might be, it's going to be different things for different ones. And so my job is I got to get rid of anything that would hinder the power. I got to get rid of spiritual cholesterol. So God has a clean artery to work through that. His power can flow through unfettered. And one of the main things is joy joy. You've got to watch your attitude. You can't let anything get to your attitude because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And during this time, when my husband passed away, I was only able to be home for two weeks. And it wasn't un 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 totally unexpected because he had been ill, but um, I was just weak from grief. And I said, God, I don't even know if I can go and stand up for eight hours a day. So I would go in in the morning, I'd stand at the cash register, I'd pray and I'd say, God, I surrender my body to you as a living sacrifice. That's our reasonable service. So I said, I surrender my body as a living sacrifice. And I just started claiming every scripture on strength I could think of. The joy of the Lord is 
my strength. And little by little, my strength increased. I mean, sometimes I'd have to go back and cry a little and then I'd come out, you know, but, but that was it. And that's how we use the word of God. That's how you use the word of God. We hold on to it. It's an anchor. All right. Now we're going to talk about the key to 100% answered prayer. God wants our prayers to be answered. We can have 100% answered prayer. Okay, so let's, this is John chapter 15, verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in in me. So how do we do that? Verse 10, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. So it connects, abiding has to do with obedience. You need to know what the commandments are. They've been taken out of school. Um, okay, and what does it mean to abide? That word in the Strong's in the Greek is meno, and it means to stay in a given place, to stay in a, a specific state, to stay in relationship or expectancy, to continue, to dwell, endure, remain. You know, there are things that are going to try uh, to uh, create an offense. And um, offense, it comes from a Greek word, scandalon, which means bait. And so what the enemy tries to do is he tries to get us defend, uh, defend to get offended. Then we take the bait and then it's the bait in a snare. Then we're in a snare. And so sometimes we might be ineffective in our prayers because we are not, we're still ensnared. Okay, and so this is why we've got to get ourselves free. So we have to stay in this state. If you look at the parable of the sower, the seed, it gives you all these different conditions where things occurred and then people got offended and they backed off from the Lord or the anxieties and cares choked out the word. And so this abiding takes practice. Praise God. It takes reckoning our flesh dead. Now, here's the best part. John 15, 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. That's 100% answered prayer. Because when you're abiding in God, when you're walking that close in him, you're going to know what his will is. You're Amen. not going to ask anything that he wouldn't want you to have. Amen. Amen. But it yeah. changes abiding in the vine. Hallelujah. And then the word abiding in you. Now, <clears throat> the, um, the first experience that I ever really had about that was, I remember I had heard a teaching about meditating on the word of God. And this is another one of my favorite scriptures from Joshua chapter one where he tells them, be strong and of good uh, courage, do not fear. Meditate upon my word day and night to do everything therein, and you will make your way successful. So God gives us the word. He gives us the mind with which we can meditate, but we have to choose to obey. And when we do that, then we make ourselves successful. Now, he had a territory he, was, uh, he had an assigned territory, and that's something else we're going to discuss. But within that territory that God assigned to him, if he would meditate on the word day and night, and he would obey it, he would make his way successful. And that word meditate comes from a Hebrew word that means mutter or murmur. So there's a vocalization that takes murmur. place. And so I remember the first time I really practiced this, I was... Um, thinking about that scripture where it says, I am the righteousness of Christ. And that, that is just a mind boggling scripture. And I can remember saying to the Lord one day, am I really the righteousness of God in Christ? 
I mean, that was just phenomenal, more than I could think, right? And so then I remembered this about muttering on the word. So I got up, I thought, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna declare this scripture. And so I walked around saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And I got up the next day and I started the same thing. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I got up the third day. And I said, righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, because I had gone from head knowledge to heart knowledge, to revelation knowledge. you got to have a revelation and you do it by meditating on the word. And, you know, we are created in the image of God. When God created, how did he do it? He spoke. He spoke. So when we're trying to do something, for instance, when God was dealing with me about my mouth. You know, it says um, in Proverbs 31 that um, the Proverb 31 woman, the law of kindness is in her tongue. Okay. And so when I was going through certain issues, I would pray that scripture over myself. And I would, I would just decree and I would declare the law of kindness is in my tongue tongue and i started getting more and more now i wasn't running my mouth because i knew but i said if i couldn't think good things to say i just wasn't saying anything so i was real quiet for a long time <laughs> until i had that manifestation of the law of kindness being in my mouth and especially us as women we can do a lot with our tongues you know for good or evil we really can praise god and so that is something that has really been uh, just so fruitful in my life. And, and so I'm, and, and when I'm decreeing, I am decreeing them with power, with effectiveness. And then, of course, we can go from there to decreeing of, for other people. I thought it was very interesting because this year is 5780 on the Hebraic calendar. And I watched the Hebraic calendar because we have a Hebraic covenant. And God still works on that calendar. All the feasts, the feast cycle is connected to that calendar. Right now, we are in a harvest season between Passover, Pesach, Easter, and Pentecost, Shavuot. And so right now, we're in the time of the wheat harvest. And as I have learned about these seasons of the Holy Spirit in connection with the feast, it really helps me to understand um, my timing, what God is doing in my life, in other lives. I see the answers come right on these feast days, not only for me, but if you study the history, you'll see so many things have happened historically on Passover or Shavuot or Rosh Hashanah. Uh, it, it's just amazing. And it builds your faith because you see that we worship a God who has synchronized the entire universe. Me, <laughs> Pastor Margo, um, Debbie. <laughs> all right. He has us all synchronized with what is going right now on the earth and it's synchronized in the heavens. It is amazing. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. All right. Okay. Now, um, we also need to be careful that we don't make intercession against people. That's good. That's very okay. good. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, Elijah talked about this. Uh, Romans 11, starting to, uh, verses 2 through 4. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Don't you know what the scripture says of Elias? How he makes intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they killed the prophets, they dig the altars, and I'm left alone, and they seek my life. But what did the, God answer him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. And so... Uh, you know, we're supposed to be praying and blessing our enemies, not cursing them. We're supposed to be praying the solution and not the problem because the people are not the problem. The problem are the demon spirits that are stirring them up. And so we're going to learn about how to deal with that. And um, then, of course, we have um, the example of Jezebel and the prophets of Baal. Uh, from 1 Kings 21, starting at verse 1. It came to pass after these things, Nabaoth the Jezreelite had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, and it was right next door to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. 
Um, and so the king wanted to buy his vineyard, but in according to Jewish law, you weren't supposed to sell your property. It belonged to God and it had to stay in your bloodline. So Nabal said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Nabal had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down on his bed and turned away his face and he wouldn't eat bread. So he's pouting. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said, why is your spirit sad that you eat no bread? So he explains and she says, don't you now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread and let your heart be merry. I will give the vineyard of Nabaoth the Jezreelite. So she writes letters in his name. This is one of the ways this spirit works. She usurps authority. Authority. Yep. So she takes the seal. She seals it with a seal, which is the mouth, mark of authority. And she sends letters to the elders and the nobles that are in the city where this man lives. Okay. So this is how this spirit works. It's going to give, it's going to contact the leaders, the elders, the nobles, the leaders of your city. They're going to be attacked by this spirit. It's, there, she's going to manip This is why we need to pray for those who are in authority over us so that when these attack comes, they'll be able to recognize it. All right. So she writes the letter saying, proclaim a fast and set Nabaoth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him saying, you did blaspheme God and the king. So here she's sending in false witnesses. But after they have a fast and they weren't fasting to God, they were fasting to Baal. So this is one way. I mean, we've heard of witches. We know about witches and warlocks, and there's been so much magic and things that have been going on, especially the last few, uh, since President Trump got into office, people who have vowed every month at the new moon, they're going to cast all these spells. And so there's been a lot of the spiritual warfare has stepped up. And um, so they follow through. Um, He's convicted on a false crime. They carry him out and they stone him that he dies. Wow. And he was a virtuous man. He, all he was doing was obeying the word of God. And the men of his city, the elders, nobles who were in the inhabitants did as she sent unto them. There, uh, they proclaimed the fast. They set him on high. There came in the two men, they lied, they sat before him, they witnessed against him, against Nabaoth in the presence of the people. They carried him out, stoned him, and he died. And they sent to Jezebel saying, Nabaoth is stoned and dead. And it came to pass when Jezebel heard he was stoned and dead, she said to Ahab, arise, take possession of the vineyard, which he refused to give you, for he is alive He's not alive, but he's dead. And they also killed all his descendants, all his children, because otherwise they would have had a claim on the land. See, the enemy's after territory. Yes. Christians are not territorial enough. Islam is after territory. In Islam, if any land ever was dwelt by Islam, they consider it belongs to Allah. And so they're always gonna go back and try to take back that land. Also, the mosque has to be the tallest building in the city. So other, um, you know, Islam understands this territorial issue, and we are called to a territory, and we're going to get into that in um, future lessons. So the big danger here in intercession, first of all, I don't know if you've heard about the teaching of going to the courts of heaven, but when we're humbling ourselves before God, when we are confessing our sins, we're going into the courts of heaven and we are getting grace and mercy from that heavenly mercy seat by the power of the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is evidence on our behalf. It is evidence of our innocence. And so we start there getting rid of our sins. And then later on, we can go, we'll talk about going about other issues. And uh, for, I'll give you an example since I brought it up. Um, the virus, the COVID-19 virus. 
I was praying for healing and, uh, but I wasn't commanding, I wasn't speaking to the virus itself. And then I had read in some literature that um, it was possible that this virus had been made from the um, lung tissue of an aborted fetus. And I also know that in China, they're doing a lot of experiments where they're crossing human and animal uh, DNA. And so this particular Sunday morning, we were on the prayer call and I really felt impressed to the Lord to go to the courts of heaven before the heavenly Sanhedrin and the judge of all the earth and confess these sins before God and ask him to give a judgment against the coronavirus. So I did that and felt released. And then this is the way I had started praying. Now I take authority over it. I cut off its crown. I declare that the crown of God, the crown of Jesus is over the crown of the virus. I speak death to it. I forbid it to spread. I forbid it to mutate in Jesus name. And Amen. I speak life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. So, um, the one, but anyway, the one of the greatest danger is taking on a burden that is not of the Lord. When I first started, when it became known I was an intercessor, everybody and their brother <laughs> was calling me. But you know, it says in James, if anyone is afflicted, let them pray. So sometimes we got to pray first. We got to get to a certain point and then God will send others to stand with us. But you got to make sure you're not taking on burdens that God hasn't called you to take. You know, people will come and say, well, I want you to pray about this or pray. And, and sometimes I'll say, well, I'm sorry, I can't pray that way because that goes against the word of God. But I'll pray this way. And if they can agree to that, then I can pray with them. But I don't necessarily take on the whole burden of the issue. I wait till God shows me he wants me to take on a burden. So that was one valuable lesson. So now I'm going to give you some homework. Amen. All right. Amen. Okay. So for next week, I want you to read Galatians 5, 19 through 21, and Ephesians chapters 1 through chapter 6, verse 10. And I want you to examine yourselves with these scriptures. If you read them, if you don't know what the words mean, look them up, because <laughs> this is very important. We want to avoid needless casualties of war. A lot of times there's casualties in spiritual warfare, and it's just because people maybe were not free of sin when they went out, or maybe they weren't called to do a certain thing. And so we want to avoid this. And also, when you're reading in the book of Ephesians, there's certain things that you need to know. Like, first of all, it starts, starts out talking about God. What a revelation, what God is. And so I want you to look at those scriptures. What is your relationship with God? And then it goes to Jesus, how he died. He rose from the dead. He sits at the right hand of the throne of God, and we are seated in him. Do you have a revelation on that? And then it goes into the gifts, the fivefold, the apostles. What do you think about the fivefold? What do you think about that? And then it goes into other uh, church relationships. It goes into family relationships. So we need to look at all of that before we start going into spiritual warfare. Okay. Minister, Minister Sally, can you repeat the Ephesians? Ephesians chapters, chapter one, all the way to chapter six through verse 10 and stop at 10. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Any questions, comments? Okay, everyone, you could unmute your mics. Um, this is the time to ask uh, questions of Elder Sally. So um, feel free to ask any question. Hi, Elder Sally, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Night, everybody. Um, I missed some of the three points of prayer. You said um, man to man, 
I got that. Man you to man, that. intercession, man to God. Man and God, right. Man to the powers of darkness. Okay. You're standing in between, forming a bridge. Or pushing the powers of darkness at bay. And how would you know when you shouldn't take on the burden of prayer when someone gives you a prayer request? Ask the Lord. Okay. And if it doesn't line up with the word, mm -hmm. sometimes people will come to you and they'll want you to pray something and it just doesn't line up with the word of God, you know? And so you can't pray that. But you might, you know, if you, you might be able to pray something else, you know, um, like this one friend that came that one time and um, she wanted me to pray something. I said, I can't pray that. I said, however, I can pray this. Because first of all, I can't pray against the word of God. Right. You know, uh, and second of all, we have if you're going to pray with somebody and be effective, you have to be in agreement. Okay. Okay. Well, but, well, hi, good night. Let me, let Is me there just say another scripture other than Ephesians 1? Ephesians 1, chapter 1 through chapter 6, verse 10. So it's Ephesians 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Stop at verse 10 in chapter 6. And Galatians, um, minister. Galatians 5, 19 through 21. And that's where if you don't understand what the word means, look it up. Because <laughs> that's the works of the flesh. We don't want them. Well, I'm going to just make a comment. Um, um, and then continue asking questions, everyone. But uh, based on um, what you were sharing, Elder Sally, concerning about um, being careful to take on a burden in prayer um, and being careful. Yes. Um, I, I want. I want to give. I want to give. Give you all an example. Um, um, I, I I was asked to to go and um, pray in a government office. Mm -hmm. um, for someone with a top position in a government department. And um, as I was going up there I, and I, I was praying, um, I remember um, hearing from the person that they had this one come and pray and that one come and pray. And I said to myself, and I had to tell her, I said, listen, um, you really need to deal with fear in your life. You know, um, and and it it and and I I even though I I prayed, um, I had to tell her. You know, I said, listen, we got to deal with this fear. There's a fear you have that you need to deal with. Um, and and basically, what 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 the issue was is she was she was she was um, you know fearful that her position was going to be changed, and um, that she was you know she was going to be moved from this position. And um, when you're dealing with government positions, you also have to deal with the political factor. And, and so um, um, I had to tell her, you got to deal with the fear, you know, because, because you are fearful of losing this. But if, if, um, if, if, you are, if you are secured in your faith in God, he will take care of you. And, and, and so, and so um, um, even though I prayed in the... Um, in the office at that time. After that, it it was it was no longer in my heart because I realized what the problem was. And um, by the way, the story ends is that she was changed. You mm. see, and one of the and one of the things, if you don't deal with fear, what you fear will come upon you. And mm. and 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 that and that's and that's why it's so important to know what to pray for and get God's release so that you can um, you know continue to believe God in a certain area. Any more questions? Come on, ask your questions. I have a question regarding, um, I know she's speaking about the pain she felt um, and the burden she felt. Like for me, I don't know if she's experienced that as an intercessor, like I deal with a lot of oppression and sometimes depression over things. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's like, I just have a heaviness that's on me and I really have to like pray and press through to get out of it. I don't know if that's something you experience, but like I, to me, I'm 
just realizing what it is now, but I'm often attacked in that way where just a sense of depression burning, wanting to escape. But then like once I begin to pray about it and seek the Lord and or worship, then I, I find that I'm free. So I'm for years now, my husband can tell you for several years now, I had to cut out a lot of things. I can watch certain shows. I, I hardly watch TV. Um, I don't go certain environments. I can't, you know, spiritually be in certain environments. So my environment have to be that of peace or something where the presence of God is on a regular basis. Even at work in my office, I have to play worship music or keep the atmosphere, um, you know, in the spirit of worship <laughs> pure as possible because I would be attacked or, you know, is that something that you experience as well? Um, I have, I don't experience it on a regular basis, but I have. Yeah. And sometimes you're picking up on the emotions of people that are around you too. Um, like I can remember when I, one time in particular, when I was working in family Christian and somebody walked in the door and the force coming off of that person just about knocked me to the ground. <laughs> and I really, uh, you know, I could just feel all this pressure coming against me. And, yeah. and it wasn't, it wasn't anything I don't think that was directed at me personally. It was just all the anger and whatever it was she had going on in her. Um, and I really had to press through. At one point, I remember hanging on to the counter and just, you know, binding spirits and pleading the blood of Jesus. And um, I remember another time too, there were these two young men that came in and they had these toys and I, I could just feel something in the store and it was like really heavy. It was like, it was pressing on me. I could feel it pressing on me. And I was like, Lord, what is this? And um, then I saw these two boys and they had these toys um, and they were like a, like a dragon head or a dinosaur head on a stick. And they were playing with one another and fighting and biting at one another. And I knew that, that those that was demonic. There was something demonic connected to that. And so once I realized what it was, then I just started praying and, and taking authority and binding and rebuking. And then it, it lightened up, but it didn't completely leave till they walked out the door with their toys. So, you know, sometimes it's something that's going on around you in the atmosphere. You're right about that. But and and the word burden means weight pressure the word glory means weight as well you know so the weight of god's glory you you know so yes i have experienced that and you're doing the right thing you just need to ask god to make sure there's nothing um giving ground for it if you if you experience it a lot if there's something giving ground if it could be uh, some mem memory that needs to be healed or something like that is it triggered at a certain time you might watch for that ask the lord he'll show you okay thank you so also along the lines of praying for persons um i find like me praying is a sense like for me it's it's like how some persons may go to therapy and get counseling. I get my, I guess my emotional or whatever challenges I have in life resolved through prayer, whether I write them down or, you know, I just spend time with God. But I find myself too, just praying for persons without them even asking me, because like you said, I can sense that something is, isn't right. Yeah. Or, um, you know, just, for peace, like I took on a new role. Um, the team that I that I'm working with is based in Nassau. Most of the persons there aren't believers, so you know, of course, you hear things and see things, and you know, music and other things. So, my, you know, I just took it upon myself to just pray with them and for them. But sometimes when I do interact with them and things are said that you know, I may not may not be <laughs> like. Christian or you know like for believers but you know I find myself sometimes trying to witness or you know trying to you know throw a little God in some of the conversations just to see where they're where they're at yeah but I mean how do you feel about that like um taking absolutely. on the position to just pray for persons you know I don't want to take you know, on something that I don't want yeah especially on your job because that's part of your territory 
That's a gate that God has called you to possess for his kingdom. Yeah. And so it is imperative that you be praying for those people and praying yes. for whoever is an authority over uh, you on your job. That's part of your commission. Amen. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and, it, and it's important to take authority in that um, place of arena because um, banks deal with um, finances, economy, and um, that's, that's one of the uh, principal areas where the enemy uh, uh, establishes strongholds. Absolutely. And, 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 and so um, you, you need to walk in great authority there. For sure, yeah. I remember um, I've been working at Walmart. God has always, I've, been, I've ministered, you know, in, in church and so forth. But um, when my husband and I were married, we had a business that we ran out of our home. I homeschooled. And then as he was, when he was getting sick after being home for 30 years, I had to go get a job. And so I wound up working at family Christian stores, thank God. <laughs> but um, anyway, then when, when they went out of business, I wound up working in the mall at Hallmark. And I remember like I would, um, some days I would just feel such an oppression. And uh, one day when I came out, I walked a different way. And I walked by this store and it was a store where they had a, like a Sphinx, they had pyramids, they had all kinds of demonic stuff there. And I noticed there was a sign. And so on Fridays, they would have a psychic medium come in and do readings. And the Lord said to me, because it did lift, the Lord said, what you started feeling was coming when that psychic medium came in. And so I started praying about that and taking authority over the different things that I saw. And in fact, after that, I made a point that every day when I went to work, I came in the other way so I could walk by that store and take authority over those demons. And then also I was praying for the salvation of the people. And I was praying for God to put the company out of business, but I was asking him to save the employees and give them better jobs than they had before Amen. with higher pay. And Amen. so I had been there about a year and um, it was harvest season. And um, I think it was Feast of Tabernacles in the fall. And I was saying, God, what is my harvest this year? You know, I've been praying and about a lot of things. And, and what is my harvest this year? And I came in and when I walked by, I noticed the doors of the store were locked. And they were taking all of the products off the shelves. <laughs> and um, they completely were out of the mall. And I even went online later to see if um, they were still in business and I couldn't even find their website at all. So I believe God put them out of business. And now they have a mattress company in there. So. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Peaceful sleep of the righteous. <laughs> I, I'm definitely in agreement that God puts believers in places uh, to carry out his mission, lighthouses or lights in dark places. And so um, I, I believe that once we're in position, God points out people, I need you to minister to this person. A video still on. Hello. What happened? Pastor Margo went out. She'll be back. Okay. Right. Um, Mr. Pastor Mr. Sally, I wanted to. Before, oh. Go ahead. Go ahead, Vicky. While Pastor Margo gets. Okay. Um, the, when gets, you were talking about the part about not not to inter have intercession against people. Yes. Could you, I think I missed pieces of that. Okay. All right. The scripture that I shared 
Well, I shared two things. I shared about Elijah. Okay. Where it talks about how um, he made intercession. Um, he was he was interceding by murmuring and complaining to God about Israel. Basically, is what he was doing. All right. Okay. And it said that um, in uh, Romans eleven two through four. Uh, okay. Starting at verse two, what, uh, what not you say the scripture of Elias, how he makes intercession to God against Israel. And we're not supposed to do that. It says to pray for your enemies, to bless them. Now, what are you going to bless them with if they're doing something evil? Bless them with a revelation that what they're doing is wrong. Right. <laughs> you know? right. So I'm not saying that you should sanction any evil, but, you know, pray for... Um, uh, one of the th prayers I pray is I bind the God of this world and I command him to loose their understanding that the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ can shine in their heart, shine in their mind. I ask for the Holy Spirit as a spirit of understanding, godly understanding to be imparted to them that they can see the truth of the gospel. Okay. Right. And also um, some of the words that you, that you shared, I think was in Greek and hebrew yes could you could you email the spelling of those to pastor eddie for us please um yeah what i could do is i could just email him the notes of all of it all right wow. okay. thank you all right thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> great i don't keep anything i just give it all <laughs> freely i have received freely give and I'm we, we, we we know that <laughs> we know about that on the dark side of the desert you know because back in um i was actually called to intercession when i was 10 years old but i, I didn't know what had happened i wasn't activated till i was in my 20s probably about 24 25 but they didn't have all these books on intercession you know mm. they didn't have i just had the holy spirit and a few books here and there and that was it that was wow. it. Wow. Wow. Well, this is a blessing. Thank God Thank for you. you. The blessing awesome. to share. I just love it. Thank you so much for now, listening. Now, now, now um, um, with, with, with everyone that's on, I, I don't know who is Galaxy A10. Who is that? Who is, who is Galaxy? Because we can't see your video, but could you just say who you are? But I don't know. They, they maybe they don't even know they're showing up as Galaxy Eight. Eight. <laughs> that could be. <laughs> <laughs> uh, reason I'm asking. Maybe what, using I, somebody else's stuff. Maybe. I I am um. I, listen, I, everyone. I um. I got a PDF copy of the uh, book that Elder Sally made reference to, uh, taking mm -hmm. our, our cities for God, ah. and I, I have I have WhatsApp it to you. So that's why I need to know who Galaxy A10 is so I could WhatsApp something to you. But, but oh. I don't know who you are. <laughs> so I've WhatsApped it to everyone who I can make out. Oh, okay. Hey, <laughs> hey, man. Hey, come on, let's, let's see your face, brother. <laughs> oh, let's see now. Um, man, I can't make you out. Who's that? Who's that? You can't hear him. I can't. I can't hear you. Turn on his audio. Is your audio on? No. You put your audio on. Okay. Who's that? Tell them. Type it on the chat. You can type it on the chat. You want to type it on the chat? Because you can't hear him. Because I can't make out his face. But he looks familiar. <laughs> I want to send I want to send this PDF copy of the book to you. Okay. And who's the other? There's another Galaxy. No, the Galax. The other one went off. That is um. I'm trying to make out the face. I can't make out the face. You can. I did. 
Hey, could you, you can't type. You can't okay. Type All right. Okay, this, this is what you do. WhatsApp me. You should have my number. All right? Can you do that? WhatsApp me. Send, send me a WhatsApp message. Good to have you. Good to have you with us. Because I want to send you the PDF copy of the book. It's amazing what you can find on the internet, Elder Sally. <laughs> oh, I know. So, um, any other questions? Um, we we will be continuing the uh, training um, every Thursday at six p.m. Okay. And and so um, mark your calendar. And if you know of anyone that could benefit from this training. We just invite you to um, please um, uh, let us know so we can invite them into uh, the training. Uh, we, we want to um, empower as many of God's people as possible. And uh, also, um, we want to encourage you, um, every time we have a training session, if you would consider um, giving an offering uh, because we want to uh, be a blessing to Elder Sally uh, for, for uh, taking her time to train us. And so um, you can consider that, um, set aside a, a seed, and, um, and then send it to us. Um, I, I will, I will um, um, WhatsApp the account number. You can either uh, drop it by Pastor Mahu's office because they are they are open pretty much like half days, um, being being a construction company, and um, or you can send it to our account at First Caribbean uh, Bank. So, if there's any other questions, is there any other questions before we close in prayer? Uh, good, good night, um, this this Avaru. Yeah, I, um, I have one quick question. Um, is that is that who's who's that? That's that, that's that's uh, uh, Lovato. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Or oh, okay, man. But you sure that's you because I see your white picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm two has become one. I'm, I'm, I'm just. One. <laughs> yeah, we, we both were listening to our account, but um, um, I've been I've been getting like a lot of trains lately. I mean, how how um do you manage your prayer life based on on getting dreams and then. Um, some of the dreams may not be um, clear. So I just wanted to have some kind of insight on, on how to manage your prayer life once you start having a lot of dreams and God dealing with your dreams. Well, some dreams can take a long time to get before you can get the interpretation. You have to pray for the interpretation. Uh, in fact, I had a dream last September of 2019 and um, at, when I first had the dream, I thought, this is reasonable. Who's this? I mean, I thought it was a pizza dream or something. But as I <laughs> continued to pray and seek the Lord, I was astounded at what this dream was about. And now that I'm seeing this, I even think this was all part of it, but I didn't realize the magnitude of it at that time. It was a dream I had about a hospital, actually, where a friend of mine works. <laughs> And um, every time I see what's going on, I just shake my head. But you need to have interpretation. Ask God for interpretation. Um, you might have other people that you know that could pray with you about that. And then, but if you start praying about what you know, then you will get more knowledge as you proceed. Um, for instance, in this dream, I don't know, it's like I always ask the Lord, like, you know, if there's a scripture that comes to your mind or there was a specific uh, item in the dream. Um, and, and if that's in the scripture, then look up all like, let's say there was doors, look up scriptures on doors and see if God brings something to you um, or gates or, you know, if there's certain numbers and there's books that you can buy on dream interpretation, symbols in dreams as well. Yeah, there's some good, there's some good, there's some good books out there. Yeah. And um, there's there's one that um, uh, there's one that James um Gould does um, yeah. has, 
that's a good book. Yeah, there's there's a number of them. Yeah, his book is very good. Perry Stone. Yeah, uh, very book good. Dreams. I don't get a lot of dreams actually. So um, I um, when I get a dream, anybody in my family hears I had a dream, they know they better listen. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't get a lot of dreams, but. Yeah, the, the other thing, the other thing too, which is which is good, uh, Navarro, is as you get in the dream, all, you should always have a notebook nearby. That's, yes. And and it's good to just jot down um, significant points in the dream, so you can go back over it. Um, but but um, as you I, I I as you grow in the Lord, you will know what dream is significant and what what is not. Okay. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, keep that notebook nearby because it looks like you're getting a lot of dreams. Absolutely. Yeah. And then just keep praying over them as well. Because that was what I did when I had this. I just kept praying because I'm like, how? And then it, I just kept praying and praying. Every I'd read it again and I'd pray. And little by little, the interpretation came. Yeah. Okay, everybody, we we have we we have discovered who Galaxy A10 is. Okay, it's none, it none other than Ronald Monroe. All Monroe. right. And so um, everybody say hello to Ronald Hi, Monroe. Ronald. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Mr. Monroe. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Ronald. Hi, Mr. Monroe. Good to have you, Ronald. And and so um um so so there, there's a lot there's a lot um of um uh, treasures we've gotten out of this teaching tonight and um, um, Elder Sally has given us scriptures, uh, she's given us um, Greek interpretation, um, she has talked about books and um, we need to take advantage of all of that. Um, as I stated at the beginning, this um, session, this training session is recorded and so um, we are going to um, Upload it in some type of form so that every one of you can have access to it. Um, it and it might be uh, the best way to probably get it out to everyone is to send it to your email. And so, um, um, if if I don't have your email, if you can send me your email, and um, if you could even do it right now, just send me your email uh, via WhatsApp, and then. And then what we'll do is um, we can email this to you because I'm going to upload it and, and um, send you the link. And then it can I, you can either download it on your computer or your, your phone. It's up to you. Um, any further questions? And then we're going to close. Awesome. Elder Sally? Yes, sir. Uh, we so appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much for um, agreeing to, uh, to, 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 to in, you know, to conduct this training for us. And so um, um, we, we, uh, we look forward to next week. And, um, and, 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 and everybody, we want, to, we want to start as much on time as possible. Um, and I know we just may give a few minutes for folks to come on, but if we can even begin logging on before six yeah. o'clock, because um, by by five forty-five, I, I, it this we'll be up, and so okay. um, you can come in and just wait um, until we start. But um, we were up from um, five forty today, okay. and so um, um, and we just look forward to you coming. Invite someone. And um, if, if, if there's anyone specifically you're inviting, just make sure, let us know so that we can uh, uh, send you the, uh, the um, ID for Zoom. And, and uh, we're, we're, we're so looking forward to um, um, all of you rejoining us and, and, um, and others coming and being a part of the teaching. So we're going to pray. I'm going to ask if we would just bow in prayer at this moment. Uh, uh, let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you and we just magnify you that we can come uh, before you today in this training. We especially are so grateful for Elder Sally and Lord, how you have, um, how you have raised her up 
um, in this season. And Lord, we truly believe, God, that, um, that this season and the seasons in front of her are going to be her greatest moments in ministry. And so, God, we pray a special strength upon her that, Lord, that um, it, is, it is so clear that, God, that you have, that you're using her to raise up a new generation of intercessors. Yes. And so, Father, we pray, God, that you would give her the wisdom and an insight as she continues to pour out into us and to others. That, Lord, that um, you will enable her, God, to um, complete her assignment on this earth. And that, God, that she will do all that you, O oh God, have revealed to her that she is going to do. Lord, we, even as we pray for her, Lord, we, we sense that you have been speaking to her about um, um, training and imparting to others. That, 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 Lord, that you have spoken to her about um, large audiences and, and those that will hear her voice. And so, God, we pray for strength for her to fulfill her assignment and mission on the earth. And God, we, we thank you for her. And Lord, we just pray, oh God, that, uh, that you would, oh God, go with her. Because as she goes into her next assignment, that Father, that you would truly, oh God, empower her to accomplish great things in your name. And Lord, as we prepare to depart, we just release a blessing over each and every one. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord uh, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Uh, the Lord lift up his counts upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. And, um, you know, we now have a new friend, Ronald. So keep, keep Ronald in, in prayer. Okay. Um, also, also um, you know, as, as we leave, I just want you to remember our neighbor in prayer. All right. Um, and, and the name is Dorcas um, Ambrister. Okay. Yeah. Right. Just keep her in prayer. So keep that name in prayer for us. And um, uh, and again, thank you, everyone, as we um, as we leave. Um, God bless you, and may the peace of God abide in your homes in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Blessings. God bless. Well, Sally. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor and Sister Victor. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, that's Sister Debbie. Yeah, that's Debbie. <laughs> the session was so good. I'm going to send you my email. So I can okay, please send me your email. And, 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 and Ronald, make sure you WhatsApp me, please. 646-9494. All right. Send me your email. God bless you all. God bless you. Bye -bye.